Screening methods for anti-cancer activity Screening methods in vitro MTT assay sulfurotamine assay dye exclusion test emitting uptake clonogenic test in vivo chemical carcinogen model liquid tumor model solid tumor hollow fiber assay MTT assay This assay is a sensitive, quantitative and reliable calorimetric assay that measures viability, proliferation and activation of cells. Assay is based on the capacity of mitochondrial dehydrogenase enzymes in living cells to convert the yellow water-soluble substrate MTT into a dark blue formazin product which is insoluble in water. The amount of formazin produced is directly proportional to the cell number and range of cell lines. It is performed to determine the enzymatic properties cells from particular cell lines in log phase of growth or trypsinized. It is counted in hemocytometer and adjusted in 96 well plate. The cells are treated with a various concentration of drug for specified duration. After MTT dye is added in each well and plates are incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 4 hours in a CO2. The plates are taken out from the incubator and dark blue colored formazin crystal are dissolved in DMSO. The plates are then read on the LISA reader at 570 nanometers percent cell viability with respect to control is calculated. Comparison with XTT assay and XTT assay labeling mixture is prepared and formazin produced as soluble percent cell viability is evaluated. SRB assay This measures whole culture protein content, which should be proportional to the cell number. Cell culture are stained with protein staining dye, sulforotamine B. SRB is a bright pink anionic dye that binds to basic amino acid of cell. Unbound dye is then removed by washing with acetic acid. During washing the dead cell either lice or loss during procedure, the amount of SRB binding is proportional to the number of live cells in left culture after drug exposure. Dye exclusion assay is based on the structural integrity of the cells. Live cells possess intact cell membranes that exclude certain dyes, such as trifin blue, eosin whereas dead cells would have lost membrane integrity. Hence they would take up the dyes while the live cells exclude it. Procedure cell line are counted cultured and inoculated in 96 well plate. Cells were incubated with different concentrations of test compounds for four days. Number of cultured cells in different wells were counted using hemocytometer percent cell viability is evaluated. Thymidine uptake assay replicating cells will incorporate thymidine which then can be determined by autoradiography or liquid scintillation counting. Provides information on tumor growth kinetics. Procedure tumor cell suspensions are exposed to the drug for 5 days. Radiolabel thymidine is added replicating cells will incorporate thymidine determined by autoradiography or liquid scintillation. CLONOGENIC assay measures the growth inhibition important for the drugs that arrest the cells at checkpoints in the cell cycle procedure single cell suspensions are exposed to anti-cancer agents. Suspensions are rinsed and plated in a semi-solid medium. After 14 to 28 days, some cells will having undergone several division form tumor colonies which can be quantified in a visual and compared. Chemical carcinogen model DMBA induced mouse skin papilloma DMBA is used as initiator and TPA is used as promoter single dose of DMBA, TPA and acetone is given to mice twice weekly. Papilloma begins to appear after 8 to 10 weeks, tumor incidence and multiplicity of treatment group is compared with DMBA control group. Mice are topically applied a single dose of 2.5 micrograms DMBA and acetone followed by 5 to 10 micrograms of TPA and 0.2 milliliters acetone twice weekly on the same site starting one week after DMBA application. Percent tumor incidence and multiplicity of treatment groups is compared with DMBA control group. 
drug under test can be administered either topically or oral route. The tumor incidence in this model is usually about 100% DMBA controls and repeated topical application of DMBA alone has also been shown to induce carcinogenesis. Drug efficacy is measured as percent reduction in carcinoma incidence compared with that of carcinogen control. On EAC cells by liquid tumor model, Ehrlich ascites carcinoma, on Swiss albino mice. The acidic tumor-bearing mice donor were used for the experiment 12 days after tumor transplantation. The acidic fluid was drawn using an 18-gauge needle into a sterile syringe. A small amount of tumor fluid was tested for microbial contamination. The acidic fluid was suitably diluted with saline. To get a concentration of 10 million cells per milliliter of tumor cell suspension, 250 microliters of this fluid was injected in each mouse by IP route to obtain acidic tumor. The mice were weighed on the day of tumor inoculation and then for each three days. Cisplatin was injected on two alternate days. Extracts were administered till ninth day intraperitoneally. On 15th day blood was collected from the animal through the retroorbital plexus to determine the hematological parameters and lipid profile. Solid tumor model The acidic fluid was drawn using 18 gauges needle into a sterile syringe. A small amount was tested for microbial contamination. Tumor viability was determined using trifin blue exclusion method and cells were counted using hemocytometer. Acidic fluid was suitably diluted in phosphate buffer saline to get a suspension. Around 0.1 milliliters of this solution was injected subcutaneously to the right hind limb of the mice to produce solid tumor. Treatment was started 24 hours after tumor inoculation. Cisplatin was injected on two alternate days i.e. the one stand third day. Extracts were administered till ninth day intraperitoneally. Drug efficacy is measured as percent reduction in tumor incidence. The hollow fiber assay The most commonly used models for in vivo anti-cancer drug screening are xenotransplantation of human tumor to mice and the hollow fiber assay HFA. Cells to be used are cultured and then suspension is introduced into the tube and incubated for 48 hours. Hollow tubes are permeable and allow drugs to enter and come in direct contact with the tumor. PVDF is a biocompatible material that allows implanting of the hollow tubes into the immunodeficient mice, either subcutaneously or intraperitoneally. In a typical experiment, each animal receives three different implants, each containing a single tumor cell line. This reduces the number of animals necessary for the analysis, thus reducing cost. After three or four days post-implantation, the drug to be tested is introduced into the animal through an intraperitoneal injection, and is continually delivered for the next four days. On the sixth day of treatment, the tube is removed and cell viability is determined by a modified MTT test, which takes into account such in vivo parameters as pharmacokinetics pH and oxygen content. Analysis of cell cycle, DNA damage and apoptosis induction can also be determined. In general, the data derived regarding the tested substance is reflective of the tumor sensitivity to drug. The results are compared with in vitro results of the tested substance and if the substance also show activity in the subcutaneous area, it's reported to exhibit promising pharmacological properties. Therefore, if the effectiveness of the compound is shown in both the intraperitoneal and subcutaneous sites, it is considered to be a promising anti-cancer agent and justifies further evaluation. Thank you.